Yo, we out of traffic. We at the next light. No more Black Tears podcast. We got Vertizi. We got Caesar C's. You know. What's good, people? What's good? What's going on, man? Everybody doing good this week? Yeah, man. Just chilling. Been enjoying the Olympics and stuff. Yeah, it's first Friday, man. So, yeah. I guess we can jump right into it, man. I know we um we ain't got no weeks of sports, but shout out to everybody that's from the Olympics, though. So I'll say this. It's a couple of team, U.S. teams. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all damn selves. Hey, man, speaking of being ashamed, man, so we talked last week about, you know, Sean Grayson, the cop that basically, you know, shamed himself, shamed his family, and shamed everyone who puts on a uniform. So Emmanuel Acho had did a, you could call it maybe an interview, a sit-down, with a group of white cops. I want to say this was not recent. I want to say this was a while ago. But it resurfaced basically because of the incident that happened um, a couple weeks ago. And during the interview, he was asked basically, do you feel more comfortable when a black cop approaches you versus a white cop? And me and C's talked about it. And that's a pretty good question. Like, how do black people typically feel versus a white cop and a black cop do you just see blue? Do you see skin color? And when you're a black person in white spaces, are you comfortable? Are you uncomfortable? See, what's your thoughts on this? So we always have a conversation. All right, stop using everybody else. Stop using white people. Stop using black people. Stop using Asians. Why it's so unique in America is we are only a certain amount of population. So when I say, if you ask a me- Mexican when he goes to Argentina, do you feel any different when it's a white cop or black cop? Yes, you have white Argentinians, black Argentinians, whatever. But for the most part, Latinos, they're going to be like, hey, you're going to the same nation, typically. American going to Africa, same thing. It's, it's going to be different because you're American. But if you're Nigerian from Nigeria and somebody asks you this question, you're going to be looking at them sideways. Why I say it's important in America is think about when you go to a doctor or a dentist or you go to a job, new job. What's the first thing you do when you're looking around? Is there anybody else like me? Not everybody, but most people will say, hey, when I see, like, hey, there is representation here where there's somebody else that understands me, gets me, or, hey, they we're in the same boat somewhere, some way, somehow. And when it comes to cop, it's like, unless I'm in a state where, like, me being in Arizona is going to be different from me being in Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina or even like New York, I see a cop, a black cop, and would be like, hey, you might get one that's a coon, you might get one that's a stickler for the law, but nine to- five times out of 10, you're going to get one that's like, all right, man, hey, I'm going to hook you up, whatever. Hey, why are you speeding, bro? What's going on? I'm trying to understand. So it's like, with that conversation being said, I think when he described it, they kind of got it. They was like, hey, when I see you a cop, I just see a badge. When I see another black person, it's like, hey, there's actually somebody that might understand what's going on with my situation. They might have empathy. That's my thoughts on that. Yeah. You want me to go? Yeah, man. Um, I ain't going to lie, man. You know, just being a black person in America, you know, if you're not used to being in white spaces, it kind of do make you feel weird having to be in a white space. Now, if you're a black person and you grew up in white spaces, like let's say you go to school and it's predominantly white, or or you're part of a group of friends and it's predominantly white, like you know, no offense, but like the black people that you see sometimes they grow up in areas that's mostly white. Someone like take say Kyla Kaepernick. You know, you you start kind of forgetting your blackness to an extent sometimes, unless it's reinforced by your parents or if you do have a small group of friends. For those who see the movie The Hate You Give, you know, we follow the, the main girl star, and she basically has a white group of friends and a black group of friends. Um, but because of the parents that she had when they was pulled over by a cop, like you could tell she was very nervous because she had been trained by her parents that, yo, cops kill niggas and, and they don't care. Um, I thought the interview was pretty good. I went back and watched more clips of it. Um, I will say this. Emmanuel Acho is a very articulate brother, very intelligent brother. I don't necessarily always like 
when he speak for black people, only because I put him in the same conversation as Godfrey. A lot of them African motherfuckers, you know, take have a different perspective on being black in America. Because some of them, you know, did not necessarily grow up in America with everything. Like he actually said himself in an interview, I have a different take on it because I don't have the all the oppression that most black Americans have dealing with this shit. But this one of the few times that I kind of, you know, felt where he was coming from in the sense of, yeah, if a black cop kind of pulls you over, at least for me, I do feel like there's more security there. Like he's not going to trip. He's not going to OD. It's going to be like an easier, you know, time with me talking to him and trying to get him to understand what I'm saying. And one of the things he um, talked about is basically when you can relate to someone you know, it, it, it breeds comfortability. But when you don't have that relation to someone, it breeds fear, you know. And a lot of times, you know, just as human beings, we are afraid of things that we don't necessarily understand or things that we don't really know about. And that's one of the things you see with a lot of white cops is they're pulling over minorities. And they, as you could tell, some of them probably haven't really dealt with too many minorities. And when you watch the news, unfortunately, or you listen to these politicians, like Trump a couple of years ago, basically talking about a lot of the Hispanic people and a lot of them being murderers and rapists. You know, if you're a Hispanic individual, that probably upsets you because, hey, that's only a small portion of us. That's not all of us. So when you watch the news or you get on social media and you see black people always being ratchet, always doing crazy stuff. Recently, Kamala had Meg the Stallion at her rally. And I just want to make this clear. There was a lot of black people that were split on that. There was some black people who thought that was cool. And there was some black people that said that looked ghetto, that was ratchet. Why you had the woman twerking at a presidential nomination? So this is like one of those conversations where, like, not all black people are gonna necessarily view it the same way based off how you grew up and and the people you've been around. You know, you might be more comfortable. You might not. You might be like, hey man, a cop is a cop. I don't care if it's black or white because I know people. If you a cop, it don't matter if you're black. They just view you wearing a badge. And I know some black people, they feel more comfortable with white people. I will definitely say this to see he's kind of hinted on this. Hey, I feel comfortable with a black cop. But if a black cop's with a white cop, hey, that's when I start getting worried, bro. Because sometimes, man, you be having these cool niggas be trying to show out for the white boy. And sometimes, man, that the black cop might be more harsh on you than the white cop because he's trying to show that he down for the cause. So, you know, those are my initial thoughts on it. What about you, Rose? It don't matter if you're black or white. You're still a cop. And that what MJ said? Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, he didn't say those words. Like Not exactly. Oh. Like oh, okay. My bad. My bad. But um But yeah, as far as being being around police and things like that, um, I've been around police a lot. Um, but if I'm legit and I'm not doing anything, it doesn't matter what color you are to me, um, because I, I I believe I know my rights to the, for, for the most parts, and I'm gonna I'm gonna behave myself as far as I'm supposed to, and even if I'm not in the wrong, I, they don't make me that uncomfortable, unless like, cause I really don't break the law anymore, so it's like this this part of my life it, it they don't bother me at all. As far as when I was younger and growing up, yeah, it didn't matter what color you um when you were. If you was the police, you was the police. You know what I'm saying? And back in the '90s and um in early '80s, like Vertizzi would say, what well, they didn't even have to be with a white cop. The, the black cops was worse than the white cops were. They was, you know what I'm saying? They was they was bullies. You know what I'm saying? I remember growing up in the neighborhood, it was mostly black cops patrolling, and those were the bullies. You know what I'm saying? These are the bully people and and all kind of stuff. So, but as far as now, it doesn't matter to me. Um, I be around them. I see them. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was in um, Diablo's um, a couple months ago, um, and a white cop walked in behind me, and then um, it was a long wait uh, for our food, and we was um, then he just started talking to me, and we just started talking and chopping it up, and we had and we we pretty much had a good conversation, um, and he was pretty cool. Um, so, um, if you look at him, if you, if you did, probably didn't have a conversation, you would just see a white cop, but just talking to him, he, he was pretty cool. And then I found out he grew up in, um, 
he grew up in Augusta and um he said um close to East Boundary. So he's probably been around a lot of black folks or whatnot. So but he was pretty cool. But if you if you didn't talk to him, you wouldn't have known that you was just in a white cop. And that's what I saw when he first walked in behind me. And then we just started talking. But he seemed like an okay person. But I don't have anything against um, law enforcement or anything like that. Um, I, I worked with them before and I, I did things with them. Um, um, I remember growing up and being on, I guess, uh, what we call that community service. And I had to go with the prisoners and things like that. It was the black cops or the black COs that had you in, had you in them ditches and picking up all that trash on the side of the road and had you like, like you was you slave. But the, um, the white COs, they didn't really care, you know what I'm saying? They was like, all right, just, just do what you're supposed to do. But they weren't really tripping. But in black, them, them black COs, they were tripping. That was back in the 90s, though. So I don't know how it is too much now. But as far as cops, cops are cop. Um, I don't have issues with them. Um, they're, they, do, they, they have a hard job, and sometimes they have an easy job. But as long as they do their job right, I think most time – it's going to be okay. But I know lots of times um, kids grow up. I know, well, I guess it's not the kids that grow up afraid of them. I guess the parents push the hate of the police on the kids. So, like, when kids grow up, they end up hating the police and things like that. But back in the day, we um, parents didn't do that. Lots of kids wanted to be the police, you know what I'm saying? What do you want to be when you grow up on career day? I want to be a police officer, a firefighter, things like that. I don't think that's the case anymore because um, people push so much hate on them, but they do have a hard job. You know what I'm saying? But I don't, I don't see a color when I, I did like Verti said, I just see blue. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think you brought up a good point. Uh, I think in Augusta CSR area it's different. We don't really have some of the issues. Some of these other places do with law enforcement. I think mainly to what you hinted at. A lot of police officers here have grown up in this area. And that kind of goes to what I was saying that in my outro saying, like familiarity breeds uh, comfortability. There was a report done when that Milwaukee shooting happened a couple years ago. I want to say over 75, 80% of the cops who police that area are not from that area. Mm -hmm. And when you go to these bigger areas like New York, LA, Vegas, Atlanta, you will notice that a lot of the cops that actually patrol that area, they're not from that area. So if you got a cop that basically grew up in Kansas, Missouri, mm -hmm. and now he's in Atlanta, Georgia, like how can you expect that to go well? You're not in Kansas anymore, <laughs> Toto. Exactly. And to what you said, police do patrol the neighborhoods, but are you actually getting out and actually talking to the community? Are you walking the beat? You know, because I know you used to see this back in the day, like, you know, cops walk the actual area and stuff like that. You know, like, are you actually getting to know the people in the community and stuff like that? Before we transition to TNT, I will ask another question because I talked about it at the top of the um, topic. Seeds, do you think there's anything to black people being in predominantly white spaces? Be more specific with that question. So let's just say you're a black person and you join a basketball team mostly a white team, or we saw recently about the racist story for that baseball team I sent you. Two, you had three black players on a team of 12 players, and they all white, all white coaches and stuff like that, you know, or you grow up in, or you're in a neighborhood, you move to a neighborhood, and it's only two black neighbors, everyone else is white. Like, is that something to being a minority in a large portion of basically people that don't look like you? I mean, in the sense of Okay, so let's say in the sense of like how you grew up or how you, how your outlook is, you can get twofold. You can have where it's like, hey, they just we just people, and then you have other perspectives like, hey, I'm different, or hey, these people treat me different. I'm in a different space. So I mean, it's all proximity. Some people it doesn't really affect how they view everything, and then some people it's two different worlds or three. Three, four different worlds, you know. What about you, Rose? Like, do you feel comfortable in white spaces? Myself, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I feel comfortable in any, any spaces. Um, yeah, I don't have an issue with um, being in white spaces, corporate spaces. You know what I'm saying? 
um, hood spaces, you know what I'm saying, ratchet places. But if I had to pick a choice, I, I'd rather not be in ratchet places as much as I used to be. <laughs> I mean, I know for me, I, I could be comfortable in white spaces, but I do know with my natural personality, I can't be my authentic self in a space that's predominantly white. Because I know there's a rhetoric that comes out of my mouth and there's th things in my personality that will make it hard because, you know, you at the park, you're playing rap music. We see all the time where there's a white woman calling the cops versus like had that just been a group of white people playing rap music, she probably would just ask them to cut, cut it down. So I, I do think there is something about trying to actually go going back to the police, even with people that's not in law enforcement, just people in general, trying to get to know one another and get an understanding, because if you understand someone, then you have the ability to love someone. And if you decide to distance yourself from someone, then it's going to be hard for you to have a relationship with that individual. But, man, talking about these Olympics, moving on to TNT. Dynamite! Boom! So it came out early in the week that Americans get 37500 for gold. 22,500 for silver and 15,000 for bronze. And a lot and a lot of people saw what other countries was making. I think the highest number I saw was a country like maybe it was a Korea again 77,000 for gold. But it was like up there, it was close to almost a hundred thousand. And people was like, wow, these Olympians aren't really making no money from actually winning in the Olympics. And for, for those who understand, most of their money come from like some of the tournaments they do, but really from endorsements. Yeah. yeah, most people, if you watch that kind of stuff, you already knew that they didn't make a lot of money from the um, from winning the gold. But but once, but but you go ahead. Yeah, once you win and become a household name, like someone like Shakari Richardson, Noah Lyles, then they get these commercials, and then they can get paid from their likeness and stuff. To be honest, um, so Nightcap for those who know Shannon Sharp and. Ocho Cinco, they talked about it and they discussed how basically they will put up 25000 for certain American athletes if they want to go. Then they said, hey, we're going to give 50000 if anybody breaks a world record. Shout out to, the, I think, the 400 meter for the women. They broke a world record today, like the, 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 the track team. Um, those, hey, shout out to those ladies. I, ta I tagged Shannon Sharp, man. Hey, run them, run them hoes their money, man. Run them hoes their money. But people came at them because we have nine gold medals. By the way, for those who've been keeping up with that, I've been talking to MGH, we have a total, I think, 40 gold medals right now, 41, 40, some 40, 41 or 43. I mean, not gold medals, my bad, medals total. And we only have nine gold medals. France had the lead last time I checked at 11. But people was like, hey, you going to pay them athletes their money? And that's when Shannon Sharp and Ultra Cinco came on that nightcap and said, yo, yo, yo. If you go back and watch, we didn't say any American that went to go. We will only give the Pacific people, Noah Lyles and some of these other people, money. But we did say anybody broke a world record, we give them 50K. Um, I got tears, and not even because of the money in terms of the Olympics, because to Rose's point, if you watch the Olympics, if you keep over tracks, you are in you all that shit. First of all, as much money as you make, Shannon, you have made a lot of money in your NFL career. Same thing for you, Ocho. You make a lot of money from your podcast, Shay Shay Club. You make a lot of money from them white people at ESPN. You just signed that deal. I did the math, man. Nine medals, and I rounded it to basically ten. Ten gold medals, 25000 Bro, that's a quarter of a million. So you ain't got that, huh? You ain't got that. You trying to backtrack talking about no only Pacific motherfuckers supposed to get the 25k? No, they all Americans. They all went over there for themselves and our country. They represented our country, nigga. You part of this country. And to be honest, I'm disappointed because I wanted you to actually do the shit. Because then I wanted other black athletes like Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and other black athletes and some of these entertainers who make money to be like, you know what, man? Hey, I'm a chip. I'm a chime in on that. Like y'all could have actually had a moment. Where all the black people came together and said, you know what, we're going to look out for our brothers and sisters who are going over there and competing and stuff. And as far as, you know, I ain't got shit to say about Ultra Single, man. You know, I like him. He's a clown. He's there for, you know, humor and stuff like that. But, 
Yeah, um, man, stand, stand, stand on your word, man. Don't be trying to say, hey, nah, if you go back and listen to what I said, I named these specific athletes, man. Stop that shit, man. That's, that's some whole shit right there. Run them niggas, they money, man. Ain't nothing but 25 Gs. You, you got that just sitting on your dresser after that bitch done left your house and piped you down with a dildo, man. So chill the fuck out. I got tears, man. You should have known, though. We're talking about Mr. McDonald's in the NFL eating McDonald's every day. So you know Oto wasn't going to pay up. Um, but Shannon, I mean, it's one of those things. It's like if a company did it or it was like an actual fund where payouts were bigger, I think it would have actually catch on. But you got these two two guys just talking, just basically just talking on the pod. You know, it's like so. Put your money where your mouth is type of situation. So, I mean, like, tears because it's like you see, you would think players get paid more, but we all know everybody makes some money off of sponsorships. It's a given thing, endorsements, sponsorships, whether it's Subway, Asics, running, all this other stuff. So, I mean, it's kind of crazy. But you look at these other countries, or the last 70 years, it was two countries that dominated the boards with athletes, it was the U.S. and the Soviet, Soviet Union, so I mean, that's just a historic thing, but yeah, not even a shout out, we're just going to call you out, hey, come on, man, nightcap, this a whole show, come on, pay up. Yeah, I ain't got no tears, because what they were doing, what we, what we used to call that, drunk talk, <laughs> that's what Uncle was doing, Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam. He, was, he was drunk talking. And then when he got called out, they pulled his card. They was like, oh, 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 oh. Run, run that tape back. Run that tape back. <laughs> so I ain't got no tears. We, we all do drunk talking. But most of the time when people do drunk talking, they get called out. They Most of the time, no, I ain't going to say most of the time. I know if I get called out drunk talking, I somewhat still do what I say I'm going to do. I don't know about everybody else, but you can't be out here drunk talking and, 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 not, and not paying the piper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I certainly agree, man. And shout out to Simone Biles, man. Hey, she, she had a hell of a whole SUNY lead to or whatever. Yeah, man. She, she had a hell of an Olympic so far, man. So, you know, Simone Biles was doing a lot of tricks and gymnastics and shit that a lot of people can't even do, man. Man, so apparently there was this hack at the self checkout machines at Walmart where basically you can cancel a purchase and get double your money back. And there was this one individual that they found had did it the most or received the most money back for it. Now, it's been fixed. But, Cs, what, what do you think about this, man? Like, this, this this form of getting your money back. Why couldn't I have seen this clip before it blew up? Because they even said he saw it on TikTok. A bunch of people, a bunch of people who saw it and actually did it saw it on TikTok. So I was just like, where was this two weeks ago, three weeks ago? But, um, I mean, I really ain't got no tears. I mean, you, eventually, you know you're going to get caught. You walk through the store, you're on camera. You literally had the camera on you when you're there. So it's like, at Walmart, you kind of know about it already. It's on the internet. How can anybody have tears? He did his little thing, spill for a little while, but he got caught. So it is what it is, man. Hey, man, I got tears, man, because... They're trying to lock old buddy up. And basically, you know, hey, man, you found a, a glitch in the system. I don't feel like you should go to jail or prison for that, man. Like, he, he ain't pulling no gun out and rob nobody. He ain't going on bank account like he was scamming. He found a glitch in the system and got some money back. Guess what? Y'all should thank old buddy, man, because he hit y'all up so goddamn much. Y'all took notice and was like, yo, we got to fix the glitch, man. So... Hey, man, I got tears, man. I'm trying to like that nigga. I saw y'all trying to talk about we try to read his license plate and all that shit. Man, let that man live you, man. He done already spent them a couple thousand dollars, man. Y'all make it seem like he hit y'all over the head for a hundred bands. Yeah, Walt and family, y'all got it, man. Charge that to the game. Man, I ain't got no tears for y'all. Man, y'all are already scamming everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Got the monopoly going. Y'all can't even go to no other grocery store. Everybody else is taxing. <laughs> and then when you go to Walmart, they fruit bad. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? They don't never have no chicken wings. You know what I'm saying? But man, forget Walmart, man. And every time I go to the self checkout line, I'm stealing something. <laughs> hey man, 
another big family corporation, man, the Hilton Hotels. So there was a video surfacing online of a white couple that was getting upset because there was a black man being attended to first, even though apparently they was ahead of him or got there before him. It led to a altercation with the security staff and the hotel staff to the point where basically you see a brawl ensues. Details emerge, and throughout the details, we find out that the reason why the staff was basically making him a priority is because technically he was a priority being a diamond member. Uh, see, I know you and me have flown Delta before, and at one point in time, you was part of that Delta circle or whatever. Like, do you have any you know thoughts on this? I ain't got no tears from a dumbass situation. It's wait so monkey ass in line. It's it's simple. If you want to be part of the club where you get priority or somebody gets in front of you, pay the fucking money. They did. So it's like, hey, you go to anything. You, you try to go to VIP or you pay to cut the line, any other event. How you going to sit there and get mad? I can see maybe if they made a complaint where they was waiting for like two hours, but that's typically not the situation. That's probably not what it was. And it's like, wasn't the crew beating on? Didn't the crew actually end up getting in a brawl? Yeah, it was the crew and the white couple. I don't think the black dude was part of the brawl. I think I saw him standing off to the side. So it's like, you probably deserve to get banned from the hotel for that shit. Um, it's, I mean, if you pay money for priorities, like, why not? You've racked up enough points. They paid your money. You didn't just wait. Or shit, if it's that if it's that bad to you, complain to the manager. They'll make concessions and all that other shit. Yeah, man. Um, I, I'm going to lean until I got tears only because I don't have no membership at no hotel. So I do know with flying, there is priority boarding. I don't know how, if there's priority check-in and check-out at hotel. So if there is, then I have no tears. But if we're in line, I mean, I don't care if you're a diamond member. Now, if you're in a different line than me because you're a diamond member and you get seen first, okay, cool. But like, other than that, man, I, I, don't, I don't feel like you should get special treatment over me just because you pay these people a couple of extra dollars a month or because you book with them more than me, unless that's what that's what they have in their bylaws or whatever. And then you could just show up and say, hey, yo, I'm a diamond member. And at that point, man, hey, if that's their rules, that's their rules. But once again, like I said, I'm not really familiar with how hotels do it. I do know that's how planes do it. And when I see people in the military board before me, niggas that's handicapped board before me, when I see people that have priority or whatever, first class board before me, hey, y'all done flown with me before. Man, I, I don't even stand up immediately. I sit down and just chill and keep listening to my music. So it is what it is if that's their rules. Yeah, I... I don't really have any. Yeah. I got tears because they got in a fight. It was just dumb to get in a fight about. But like Vertizzi says, like if there's clear signs and things like that that says that this person can do this, then hey, shut up and wait. But if there ain't no signs or nothing like that, and then Somebody just walk in front of me, and I'm like, "Hey, man, what's going on?" Well, I'm, 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 a, I'm a, I don't care about none of that. I don't care about none of that. <laughs> I don't care about none of that. Like you, you ain't gonna walk in front of me. You know what I'm saying? That's a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? But that's that right disrespectful. Yeah, nah. But if they got signs up and then things like that, then it, okay, I'll fall back. But ain't no signs up. <laughs> you just, it, it, you ain't about to walk in front of me. <laughs> Like just walk past you, brush past you, be like, yo, man, what's up? I mean, I'm a diamond member, shut your ass up. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Like, we, we, we I, I ain't trying to fight you or nothing like that. I ain't no fighter. I'm a lover, but, man, you have to see me. Something. I'm going to say something. Yeah, man. Hey, especially because most of the time when you go check in a hotel, you've already been on the road for a long time, so you're trying to get the fuck in your room, man. Hey, man. So. You have a nice hotel, you're comfortable, AC and everything. Or you could just say, fuck it, I'm going to live on the streets. So there was this black couple, Rose, they sent us a video. They have a whole TikTok page dedicated to it in the YouTube channel where they chose to be houseless, which is the nice term, the Gen Z term for homeless. They live in a van, 
They take showers at the gym, apparently. You know, they grow their own fruit. Um, Where at? I, they say in the fields and stuff. Like, they just find land and just so they grow steal fruit. it. <laughs> and he, basically, the, the man said, hey, I'm tired of working these jobs, man. I'm tired of punching the clock. And his woman's like, yeah, we're not punching no clock. And I'll be real, man. I got tears only because, like, yo, are we that goddamn tired of working? Like, is this new generation that tired of working and punching the clock? Then it's like, fuck it, man. I'll go sit down and eat some jail food, bro. I'll go sit down and eat some trash can food. Is that what y'all doing, bro? Like, hey, man, if you want to live on uh, a reservation with all them other, I'm going to say hippies, Mm -hmm. and them free love people, that's different. You know, because them people be like to be nude and they like to eat from the grass, earth and all that other stuff. Cool, cool, cool. I have no problem with that. It's your lifestyle. But if you just basically saying, I don't want to go to work no more and I'm finna just basically driving this van and I'm finna over, be over here, like you said, basically going to other people's yards, grow some watermelon, then a nigga going to the backyard. I ain't know I had watermelon. Then you just snatched that watermelon out of nowhere. You know, you over here going to the gym talking about you can take showers in the gym for free. Which I didn't, hey, in my gym, you can't do that. You have a membership. Mm-hmm. So, hey, man, maybe those are some bigger gyms that don't even notice when homeless people walk up in there. I don't know. But, and also, I thought, listen, that got a whole van. So, how y'all put gas in the car? But then I realized, clicked on the little link they got, they got cash up and shit. Then, I'm thinking, then I started thinking deeper, like, hold up, bro. You know how when you be high, you just start thinking real deep about shit? I just started thinking real deep, like, hold up, bro. If y'all houseless, how y'all charge y'all phones? In fact, why, why, why y'all even got phones? phones. <laughs> like, like, hold up, bro. Is this just a scam to get money from people? Yes. <laughs> That's what I start thinking. Yes. Like, this, this is just a scam. Because people start, I see read the comments and say, I'm going to send y'all some money. And then they doing the live and he talking talking about, man, thank you for the $10. Why you need money if you living off of the earth? Yeah, you but, need gas, you need to charge your phone, because you gotta pay your phone bill, nigga. Like, man, I started thinking to myself, man, y'all are Gen Z motherfuckers just lazy. Yeah, that's what it is. Lazy and beggars. They ride a bag online, and, and the thing about it is, people are watching this stuff and giving them views and paying these people. Like, that's their job to be a bum. And people are paying them to be a bum, and they're getting paid. They're getting paid way more than us. Man, back in the day, bums had to earn it. They had to sit on the side of the road, like scrub from King of the Hill, with a can or wash your windows as you come by. Now, now the bum like all these hoes that they just sit online all day and, and don't do nothing online, and 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 people pay them. Like we well, got what was that one hoe you sent me loan to some girl? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and tell me, I'm a homeless, but she just got a phone though. Yeah, I'm homeless. I need I just need money for the room tonight. And they get online and beg. Like, man, y'all got to stop giving these people money. Stop watching these videos. When y'all see something like that, scroll past it and block them. Do not let them cash money off of you. Losers. If I got to go to work, y'all got to go to work. Y'all ain't got to go to work, but y'all ain't going to be on here banging <laughs> off, my, off my time. It was a whole train during the pandemic. People, like, lost their jobs. They're like, fuck it, I'm going out on the road. It was called like hashtag man life. So it was a bunch of people that had they would kick, take vehicles and convert them shits into like full homes where they got running water, plumbing, a kitchen, and all this other shit. So it was like they probably saw somebody else that did it, copied off of them. Uh, when I first saw it, I'm like, these niggas is sitting in the middle of the field, eating fruit, talking shit. And the first, we all had the same thought. Yo, homeless, how the hell are you paying your phone bill? Why the fuck are you on live? Because we paying it. Every time we watch it, every time we watch it and click on it, we, we paying it's the shit. phone bill. And it's like, you're... So many questions pop up. It's like, how you wash your clothes? Are you washing your ass? Whose fucking field are you in? Are you in a public fucking field? And then these motherfuckers got two dogs. How are you homeless and you have a pet? It's a lot of homeless animals out there. I'm, See, it's chill. I'm saying, I'm saying. The way these niggas was talking, we just eat fruit. Like, what are you just picking shit out the trash can, giving it to the dog? What the fuck are you doing? And it's just like, they, 
they on this whole like fake trope about like get out the matrix and I'm tired of punching the clock. Yeah, we've heard that rhetoric before. You tired of these jobs, capitalism, and all this other shit? Man, y'all just don't want to, like Rose said and like her TV said, y'all just don't want to fucking work. Y'all basically making these damn videos where people are paying for your gas, paying for your damn lifestyle for you to fucking drive around. This motherfucker sat there and said, oh, what do you do when it gets cold outside? Oh, we just go further south. And I'm like, how the fuck do you do that? <laughs> oh, we live in, oh, they, comments coming up on the live. Oh, they have a van. No tears for your stupid shit. Hey, man. Talk about stupid shit, though. So, we talked before about having platonic friends of the opposite sex. We talked about, is it possible? The pros and cons of both. Now, there was this woman who got online this week and said, hey, story time. I'm mad at my homeboy because we was hanging out one day and we kept going to different places and he would not open my door. And after the third or fourth time, I said, hold up, bro. I know I'm supposed to be the homie, but I'm still a woman. Open my door. Open my door. Am I tripping, y'all? Yeah, I, I got tears, man, because bitch, you tripping. Bitch, you bring y'all on tripping. Like, me, like, ladies, let me explain this. You said this before. Let me explain this again, because obviously some of y'all wasn't listening the first time. If we friends and we plutonic friends, you get treated like a friend. You ask me for ten, fifteen dollars when you got a man or you got other niggas you fucking with. You thinking I'm gonna pay for us to go out for lunch? Me opening your door and shit like that, and don't get it twisted. I don't even knock a brother if he decides to open his homegirl door because you just might be that much of a gentleman when the instincts in you. I've done that before for homegirls, but that ain't no shit that's like um like I got to do it. Like, you you have to do it. Hey, ladies, make a decision. Either get that nigga some pussy or you his friend. If you give him some pussy, then all the stuff that come with you giving him pussy, hey, expect that shit. But if you just his, if you just his friend, then, hey, the same way your homegirls will treat you, expect that same type of behavior. You don't be thinking he wants to treat you differently. Yeah, I ain't got no terror for this hoe. She should have been the hoe of the week. Man, check it. You can't ask your homeboy to open up your door. How you gonna ask your homegirl to open up your door? No, we ain't doing that. No, I'm not opening up my homeboy's door. You know, when I, your homegirls ain't open up your door, that's your homeboy, so he not opening up your door. It's, it's plain and simple. No tears. Uh, I ain't got no tears. It's, if you the homie, you the homie. If you're actually the friend, a friend, and not just like, oh, this is my homegirl, got something going on or whatever, of course you're not expected to do anything. It's like, nigga, it's a door. Open the fucking door. I'm not opening up your car door. I'm not holding the door open for you. I'm not looking. I'm not doing shit for you. You the homie. That's it. So how the fuck do you expect some? Oh, but I'm still a woman. No, you the homie. You that. You you just a friend. So shit, it, it is what I treat you like. Treat you like anybody else. At that point, it's just anybody else. You the homie. Hey, Rose said she should have been in the hole of the week. Because I don't know what's wrong with that hoe. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with that hoe either. What's wrong with them? What's wrong with these hoes, y'all? So, for those who be on TikTok, there's this influencer called Queen of Kings. It's a black female content creator who basically talks about how she has a white husband. They have a baby. Her husband's a provider, takes care of, um, you know, her, and basically how she had to leave outside of the black community to find her king or whatever. Well, recently, I guess they got in an argument, and it was exposed that basically that nigga's jobless, that she basically takes care of that nigga, and she funds their lifestyle and pays for everything. Seeds, what's wrong with these hoes? Man, uh... I hate the fact that they fucking did a, a shitty ass spin on one of my favorite shows, King of Queens. Um, I hated seeing the, her videos anyway. I didn't know what the fuck the name of their channel was or whatever. I just happened to see that shit on social media. Um, anytime you see those videos where it's, 
it's nothing against interracial couples. It's just when you see those type of videos where they're trying to paint a certain rhetoric. She seemed like she was in that camp where she was like, be done with Tyrone and get yourself a, a Tyler, you know, that whole trope. So, I mean, bitch, you chose your husband. You was paying all the bills. You made painting this whole picture like it was so much better on the other side. But I mean, hey, it just goes to show you people ain't shit on either no matter gender, color, race, whatever. Some people just ain't shit. And that's what you chose. So I mean, anytime anybody wants to say, like, hey, I'm gonna go to the other side, it's gonna be better. It might work out for you. It might not, but it's like it's still at the end of the day, it's you choosing to do deal with shittiness or lack thereof, whatever. It's your choice. So, I mean, hey, it just goes to show you, man, what you see on the internet ain't always real. Yeah, man. It ain't the grass ain't always greener on the other side of the field. You know what I'm saying? She she chose to go to the other side. She chose to go to the dark side. She went to Dark Vader side, you know what I'm saying? Hooked up with Big Show. You know what I'm saying? And the show won great. It wasn't the greatest showman on earth. You know what I'm saying? It it wasn't that. And then she tried, and, and she used that to make money off of it. And all y'all hoes fell for it. And then this hoe got drunk and wanna expose everything. Ho, don't you know that's your bank? Don't you know that's your paper? You got money off of that. Not everybody's clowning you. Like, what's wrong with these hoes? Like, this is the main reason why we talk about this. It's like sometimes some dudes be the hoes, but most of the time y'all hoes so dumb, man. Y'all, y'all got to be the hoes. Like, what's wrong with y'all? Yeah, man, I'm going to keep it 100, man. I, it's a couple things I want to I point out. One, women, stop following these relationship pages on TikTok. Like these pages where it's, you know, Rory and, and, and Christine and Ashley and uh, Mac. Stop following those pages. I'm not trying to make it seem like all famous couples are fucked up. But no couple's perfect. Let's make that clear. No couple's perfect. So, like, when you follow these pages, it's always going to be content. It's, like, relationship-oriented and basically making it seem like everything's cool and yada, yada, yada. So, but if you do follow them pages, just at least know they marriage or relationship may not be perfect. So, now that I got out of the way, I want to really talk about what I really wanted to dive in. Hey, man, you black bitches, y'all hell. I keep seeing a lot of y'all... Talk about how much better it is to be a white man, that white men are providers. White men don't do all that cheating that black men do. Let me keep it real with y'all, man. C's and me disagree a lot when it comes to like racial disparity, but one thing C's always said that I agree on, you got bullshit in every fucking community. And every community is bullshit. You got every community got men that beat on bitches, that cheat on bitches, that have big, that have babies out of wear a lot. You got hoes in every community. You got I just seen Asian hoes, Indian hoes, white hoes, black hoes. I just seen hoes from outer space. You I, know? I I I want I, I want to see that <laughs> hoe from outer space. That is that hoe hey, man, from outer space. Hey, turn, hey, turn on that space, Jay pimping it, man. Shout out to them again. But like I said though, man, hey, every community got bullshit. Black women, y'all gotta stop. Posting that white men treat you better than black men. Man, white bitches get raped just like y'all do. White bitches get beat on just like y'all do. Tom, a lot of people don't talk about this. We only talk about the black players when it comes to sport. Y'all know Tom Brady got a baby mama, right? And I ain't talking about Giselle, the one he just divorced. He had kids with another woman before he even got with Giselle. So all these issues that you see in the black community, it's not, it's not the black community, black bitches. It's the niggas you choosing. You choosing fucked up niggas. And guess what? If black niggas is fucking you over, you're going to go to the Asian community, the Hispanic community, the white community, and guess what? You're going to choose the same fucked up type of niggas that you was choosing in the black community. And that's pretty much my main thing. I'm just tired of seeing a lot of you black women downplay black men and stuff like that. 
and make it seem like black men ain't great fathers, black men ain't great husbands, black men ain't great providers and stuff like that. Hey, we out here doing what the fuck we supposed to be doing to the best of our motherfucking ability against this system that's oppressing us. The same system that's oppressing y'all. Like, y'all over here trying to fuck us over and make us play a game with our hand tied behind our back. But then y'all want to get with these other motherfucking races, play the same fucking game, but allow that nigga to be able to use both his motherfucking hands, and then you want to be like, oh yeah, babe, I'm going to help you get to the next level of the game. See, that be the motherfucking problem right there. It ain't necessarily the fact that, oh, one community got better men than another community, because if you want to be real, white men are probably the worst. Because if you've ever had, if you've ever actually talked to white women, they the ones who be really getting, like, really, really sexually assaulted. And they the ones who be getting fucked up. Like, the only reason why y'all don't know about it, and this was the last thing I want to say, is white women don't go online. They don't be public about all this shit. That's why you don't see a lot of white athletes who are married to white women. You don't really see all their drama in the news and all this other shit. Because they really try to keep that shit in-house or whatever. And they just deal with that shit in silence. So y'all be thinking, because this white bitch suffering in silence, y'all be thinking everything great. The difference is y'all be over here want to play victim and get all, this, get all this attention and shit. So y'all be quick to go online. Y'all be quick to go to your mom's house. A white bitch will get a black eye and her mom be like, why you got that black eye? Man, I fell. Black bitches will knock they nigga in they shit. And when that nigga smack them back, tell everybody his mama, you know you raised the man beater, right? Hey, yeah. speak, speaking of Man Beaters, man, y'all know that song back in the day, Man Eater, man, by Hall and Oaks, man. You, some people could say that song is part of a great album. I came up with this topic that I sent y'all earlier in the week, and I thought it would be interesting. You can go sit at the listening party of any album of any artist. Which one would be and why? You get three. Rose, what's your third? Okay. So when you sent that, the first thought in my head was it would be really fun to go to an R. Kelly party. Because you know it's gonna be some young tenders in there, some young tenderonies in there. Ain't nothing wrong with young bitch see as long as they legal, nigga. Yeah, no, nah, it's gonna be some illegals in there. It gonna be some illegals in there. You know, you know the ones you like, Vertizzi. Like, it was never proven in the court of law. Your man. name might be on one of them lists, <laughs> yeah. an FBI little, uh, cop list. But nah, but on the serious tip, yeah. But R. Kelly, I would want to go to that listening party to watch, uh, listen to um, Twelve play. Good album. Because um, the main reason was because I know Leo was gonna be there, and I don't want to see Leo because that was one of my favorite people in the world. So I would want to go see her. So I, at the listening party, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I, I don't care about nobody else there. I'm trying to find her. I don't know how old she was back then, but I know I was probably around the same age. I don't know. Album number party number two. It's got to be, and this is going in order, from the from the from the oldest to the to the to the youngest. So no Diddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chronic 2001 Woo! Came out in 1999 Had Everybody on it Had everybody on it So so basically I like this You also added the people that's featured on the album Who been the party too Yes Hey small moves Small moves Yes so I'm drinking beer with Devin the Dude, smoking weed with Devin the Dude, <laughs> Snoop Dogg there, Eminem there, you know what I'm saying, uh, Dog Pound there, you know what I'm saying, everybody there. And the album was fire. And the album was fire. My third, I got to bring it back to Georgia. There were some other ones that I, that I thought about, but this had to be the top. I can't wait to hear this. I'm going to Magic City to, 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 to the trap or die. To, to, to the trap or die. That's a, Party release. That's a good okay. choice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm, yeah. going, I'm going to Magic City for the trap or die release. Bitch, me still going to be there. BMF in the building. BMF going to be there. Damn. Hey, he, he, what did he say? He, 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 he giving everybody 100000 to throw. Everybody got champagne bottles. I'm trying to be there. 
BMF in the building. I ain't gonna lie, that's probably gonna be the middle, most lit party on this whole table right now. I'm trying to be there. Hey. Definitely. definitely hey. Be the one. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, book me a ticket there. Elon Musk, I'm trying to be there. Where your <laughs> spaceship at? Hey, see, what's your third? Yeah, man. So you think of all time, man. It's like it's a lot of good albums, man. You know, especially if you got a lot of favorites, man. But you know, just because I saw the movie recently and it made me think of it, so it's it's not really a split, but it's like I don't remember listening to the original album, but first one, Bob Marley and the Wailers, Exodus slash Legends, because that's the ones where I know a lot of the songs from. So Legends. You seen the movie? You seen how crazy it was. Being like around reggae around that time, like touring Europe, wherever the listening party, whether it was in Jamaica or somewhere in Europe, I'll take either one, man. Um, only disappointment with that one is Peter Tosh wasn't with the group at that time. That would have been the only disappointment, but I mean, that's that's a whole part of my personality, man. Just the Mar Bob Marley, man, you know, died too early. Just seeing that whole dynamic. Bob Marley and the Whalers, just the whole movement, Jamaica, the world, getting a view of the Rastafarian lifestyle, uh, saying about what's going on in the world at that time. So, I mean, you know, movies and shakers, it's one of them big albums you got to see. Number two, if you've seen the Chappelle show or you just a Prince fan, man, Purple Rain. I got to go to the Purple Rain, Vanity. I say that vanity and the uh, the girls, that whole crew, man. Um, times are just different, man. You know, I know uh, we've heard stories about Prince. You know, this was before he had money. He was getting to the money, but you know, Eddie Murphy in the building, Charlie Murphy in the building, Rick James. Uh, you know, a whole lot of white girl, if you know what I mean. Um, this a lot of stuff, man. You know, a whole lot of people back in the day. I think it would be some familiar faces. It'd be a crazy party to see, man. And then you know, I had to challenge this nigga Prince to a basketball game. So you know, got to do all that. You know, whip it out. You know, break it out in the middle of the floor. Like, hey, hey, beat me first to ten. Why you call yourself Prince, man? You ain't no king. You ain't no king. You know all that. And the last one, man. I was like, you know what? The last one, I was like, let me go big. At that time, hip hop hadn't seen a group so dynamic as all the members. We've seen like the great groups, like you got like the Sugar Hill Gang, uh, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, uh, Boogie Down Productions, you know, some of my favorite groups, but this one just took the cake. I'm just like, yo. Every member alive before they hit it big. Could you imagine a listening party with the great Wu Tang Clan and the 36 Chambers? Imagine ODB, the RZA, the Giza, Old Dirty Bastard, Method Man. And this is even when Capadon before he got locked up. So it's like the unofficial member, Capadon, all the affiliates. You know, you got the crew, Ghostface Killer, Raekwon. The whole crew from Staten Island, everybody from Brooklyn, you know, just and then everybody coming together, man. I'm pretty sure at that time, Red and Meth ran into each other, Keith Murray, all these people were in the same circle. So it was like just coming off the circuit. If there was a, a Wu-Tang party, you know everybody was going to be there at that time. So it would just would have been a crazy one to see, man. Before Wu-Tang, you know, before Wu-Tang became... Forever. So those are my three. Man. Yeah, man. So for me, man, mine is gonna be like um Rose. It's gonna be in order by age when it came out. The first one had to be, had to be thrown. I consider that probably the greatest album of all time. That album had like out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, out of nine songs, I wanna say that album had seven singles. Which even if you had 20 fucking songs on the album, seven singles is hey, that that's a lot of fucking singles. Cause that that basically means you gotta hit songs. Like, hey man, that whole album is a vibe. If you wanna chill, have a good time, have a party, 
like being there to watch Michael Jackson, you know, hit the thriller dance moves, to see him do the Billy Jean um, shit. Like, hey, Quincy Jones going to be there too. He produced the album. And I, I don't see how I can't have a good time if I'm chilling with who I consider the greatest artist of all time, Michael Jackson. And I'm probably chilling with the greatest producer of all time, C's, Quincy fucking Jones. You know, hey, it's, it's going to be a great time. And, you know, we're talking about special guests. I will be in the presence of Paul McCarthy, too. Now, the next album, I had to go to hip hop. I think this is the greatest hip hop album of all time. And this is a top five rapper of all time. Life After Fucking Death. The only negative about this album is I will have to be in the presence with P. Diddy slash Puff Dad. But besides that, besides that, I get to chill with who I think is one of the greatest listeners of all time, Biggie Smalls. I get to see Little Kim in her prime when she was looking fucking beautiful. I get to chill with R. Kelly because R. Kelly was on this album too. Like, hey, I, I'm actually excited for this. I get to chill with you know, Jada Kiss and the, the rest of the locks. Even Jay-Z's on the album. Kelly Price is on the album. It has my favorite song of all time, the greatest song of all time, which I think is um, um, Sky's the Limit. So to be honest, I, I just don't see how I can't have a good time. Not, not to mention, bro, hey, I get to see Biggie possibly rapping to some of his lyrics, man. And, you know, they're going to be lit. We're going to be drinking Chris Crystal the high champagne and Hennessy gonna be in there. Now, me and um Rose did share artists, and the artist we shared was R. Kelly. We just had different albums. Now, for those who've been listening to the pod, Rose and Juice Man is like ten years older than us, so he picked Twelve Play, which makes sense because he's older than me. I actually picked what I think is R. Kelly's best album, but. If you were my age range, you might agree. The Chocolate Factory. Like that album right there. I got Step in the Name of Love, the remix. Been all the way around the world. Addiction remix. That song, Imagine That. Man, I got a song with Fat Joe. Like, yo, that album start to finish was was a vibe. But when that song, Step in the Name of Love, come on, remix. And we start dancing and grooving and, and chucking and jiving and shaking in that motherfucker. And R. Kelly's in that bitch doing what he does, which from all the interviews you see, R. Kelly seems like he a vibe. R. Kelly seems like he'd be a hell of a motherfucker to hang out with. You know, you know it's going to be hoes there. You know, hey, hey I, I'm only going to mess with the ones that's legal. I'm only going to mess with the ones that's legal. You know, so I, I'm a, I'm be calling bitches like, hey bitch, you you 18? All right, cool. You 18? Cool, cool, cool. You can sit in my lap down. Let, let us chill, you know. But you know it's gonna be bitches there. It's gonna be a great time. And each album to me is not just a great album. It's an album that I would put in that top ten discussion in terms of albums of all time. And then if you maybe narrow it to their genre. Like, depending on what you define thriller, if you define it as an R&B album, I, I got a top five. If you define it as a pop album, I got number one. I already told you, I think, you know, Life After Death is the greatest hip-hop album of all time. And then Chocolate Factory, I think that's easily a top five R&B album of all time, man. So, you know, I'm listening to great music. I'm chilling with people that, hey, I, I actually love their work, and, and I would love to be able to be in their presence and hang with them and talk to them. You know, see, was there any maybe honorable mentions that you had. Oh, shit. Damn, that's a good one, man. Um, I probably would say Jay-Z's Black Album. That listening party would have been crazy. Um, back in the day, man, it's so many artists, man. Uh, Jimi Hendrix listening party probably would have been crazy. Uh, R and B wise, man, it's right. Uh, it's because there's so many people you want to party with, man. So it's like 
That trap or die one, man, that probably takes the cake, though. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot, man. It's, 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 you think of, like, just, this makes you want to go back and watch those old music documentaries where, like, people, the process of people making an album, and then it follows them to when they finally do the release party. And it's like, you seeing the footage, just like, years later. So, I mean, man, imagine, like, one of Timbaland or Missy's albums. Imagine that time period. When they first, some of your favorite songs, your first, just think about your favorite albums when they drop. Just go back to that. Just like if I could be at that listener party, man. I mean, that was another reason for my list, man. Was there was albums that I'm gonna go back to and listen to for the first time again. Like because there's certain there's certain songs that they gonna always be dope, but that first time you heard the song, it did something to you. I only had two honorable mentions. Lupe Fiasco's Food and Liquor 2. I love that album start to finish. When I first heard a lot of those songs in that album, it was like I smoked a blunt. It opened my eyes to a whole new world. It made me more conscious of my blackness and stuff like that. It, it, was, it was a beautiful album. But then another one, Confessions. When that first dropped, that was a whole party swing right there, man. Like every, like there were so many upbeat songs in that album, man. That it, it that was an album that if you that if you like to dance, it was hard to put that album on and not dance, man. And of course, Yeah is one of the greatest songs written, produced, songs of all fucking time. Like Yeah was in man, remember in the two thousands, every goddamn movie after that song came out had Yeah in the scene. Like you being they be in the club, like they just over here trying to be some bitches and Yeah playing in the background. Like Hitch was one of the best movies of the two thousands from the comedy. And that was the song that when you think of Hitch, you think of that song. You know, so yeah, man. Uh, we could talk all night about all the different artists that we love to be in their presence and all the different um albums we want to be in. Cities. We're gonna wrap it up real quick. What do you think is the greatest album of all time? Uh, all right, Thriller. If I force to pick, which I think is this whole rhetoric of you said one album is the best of all time, I'm forced to pick. Probably Thriller. Um, but besides that, man, like there's no one album I could say is perfect. There's great albums. It's like maybe one or two tracks. Like especially when you go back and you listen to the Lux editions, man. There's 50 albums, I could probably, 25 albums I could probably name, if they would have released the deluxe edition the first time, it probably would have been the perfect album, but, you know, um, yeah, so that, that's, I know one more thing I, we forgot to mention, though, we didn't think about it, it just came across my mind, thinking about all the listening parties, remember back when movie soundtracks were actually great albums? Yeah, man. There's a lot of movies like the Friday movie, man, the House Party movies. In too deep, you know. In too deep, you know. A lot, especially a lot of black movies. Hell, Whitney. Then she won a Grammy for The Bodyguard. Yeah, like you know, and there's a lot of great soundtracks, Above especially the with rim. black movies. Above the rim. Above you know? the rim. So yeah, I mean, that's one of the things. Space Jam had a nice soundtrack. And yours, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, my closing thoughts, man. Hey, when you're black in America, man, don't never forget that you're black. Even if you feel comfortable in white spaces, just just know you may be comfortable, but the white people may not be comfortable with your presence. And the greatest power we have is to love one another, care for one another. And music is one thing about music. Music is universal. No matter what language you speak, no matter what race you are, and we all got blood. If you got blood, you got a heartbeat. If you got a heartbeat, Hey, that heartbeat want to move to the rhythm. So, hey, when you when you get done listening to our pod, put on some music, man. With that being said, there was an Airbnb Rock Kim. Peace.